Romans chapter 5, verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more, everybody say much more, much more they which receive abundance of grace, abundance of charis, and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life, hallelujah, reign in life uh, by one, come on somebody, reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Jesus, through the abundance of grace, has caused us to be able to walk in this abundant life, to walk in the good things that God has for us, that the Father has for us. Many times we use that term, uh, God. Uh, how many know there is God the Father and God the Son? and God the Holy Spirit. And we believe in the Trinity here. We believe that there is a Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We believe that uh, we worship the Father and that Jesus is the mediator between us and the Father. And Jesus is now seated at the right hand of the Father in heaven. And now we are in Jesus, in as His body. We are seated in heavenly places right there at the right hand of the Father. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. How many know the right hand is the hand of blessing? And so the father would anoint his children, uh, the firstborn, with the blessing of the father. Well, how many know that Jesus is in the right hand of blessing? And how many know that you're in the right hand of blessing this morning? Come on. Glory to God. And God wants to bless you this morning. God wants to just slap you upside the head and bless you. Glory to God. Amen. He, I mean, God wants to bless you real good. Amen. I'll tell you what. I, I, I just, I get excited about the good news of Jesus. I, I, I just love what, what he, he just, every morning. His mercies are new. His grace is new. That, that goodness of God. And we see that goodness every day. He loves you. Amen. 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 Do you know, for God so loved, God the Father, so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son. How many know the Father sowed Jesus? Amen. He sowed Jesus. And you are the Father's harvest. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You are the harvest. And you know, there are, there are harvests in this world that we desire. There are harvests that we'd love to have. Harvests of, of good things. Blessings. Well, the blessing that the Father always desired was you. He desired you. And we're adopted in. Come on, somebody. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Now, turn with me over here to John chapter 14. Let's, let's get into this. John chapter 14. And verse 10. Believe you not that I am. Jesus is talking. He says, believe you that I am in the Father. And the Father is in me. The words that I speak to you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, He does the works. Now, how many know that Jesus would pull Himself aside and He would pray and He would seek the Father, come on, and He would hear what He was supposed to do? Jesus never did anything except what His Father told Him to do. Amen. How many know that we're supposed to be doing what our Father tells us to do? Come on. Amen. When I was a little boy, my dad would say, go out and weed the weeds, you know, go out and pick up, the, pick up this, do that. And, and uh, there were times I didn't want to do that. I want to go play baseball. I wanted to go and have some fun. But how many know that there was a reward? There was, there was a blessing. And there's something about honoring your father and mother Amen. that will cause... You know, that's the very first uh, commandment in the Word of God that came with promise. That's right. That is a promise that if we honor our father, oh, hallelujah, and our mother, glory to God. <laughs> Amen. Well, uh, if we do that, then, then we're going to have long life. We're going to be blessed. Amen. Amen. Now, how many know that long life's a blessing? Yes. Amen. 
Well, if long life's a blessing, why is everybody trying to get to heaven so fast? Everybody, you know, well, I just, you know, uh, uh, we're trying to get to heaven. Oh, I can't wait to get to heaven. Well, God has a complete different aspect to this. He's not thinking about how fast you can get to heaven. He's thinking about not just about, you know, getting to heaven. He's thinking about you being born again. Amen. So when you realize we're born again creatures of the Father, we are a new creation. We are sons and daughters. Yes. We are the children of the King. We are a part of the royal family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when we realize who we are and the authority of the believer and we rise up in who we are, then we'll want long life because we'll realize we have a purpose and a destiny. We're not, we're not trying to get to heaven. Yeah, you get to go to heaven. Calm down. <laughs> but we are living our lives as the children of God right now. Your eternity started when you were born again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So notice this, that Jesus, he only did what his father said. He only spoke the words that came out of his mouth were the words of the father. Look at the next verse here. It says... Um, um, it says, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. So in other words, believe that I am in the Father and the Father's in me because the words that I speak are my harvest. What I speak, what Jesus spoke was the harvest. And it wasn't the harvest of Jesus. It was the harvest of the Father. Come on. Glory to God. Matter of fact, when Jesus created everything, we know that from John chapter 1. Uh, when He created everything, He created everything. But God gets the credit. The Father gets the credit because Jesus only spoke what the Father told Him to create. Amen. And everything was created for Jesus. Hallelujah. But it was through the Father. Glory be to God. And we've got to have a great understanding of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. I think sometimes we get on this path where we're only praying to Jesus, you know, and, and Jesus, you know, and because Jesus is the head of the church. Amen. Amen. But, it, you know, there, there's, there's three aspects to God. And when we understand there's three aspects to God, there is a beautiful thing about being a child. There's a beautiful thing about being the children of the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We've been reconciled. Yes. Mm -hmm. Reconciled to the Father. Yes. Through Jesus. Come on, somebody. Amen. Well, I believe that Jesus is the Father. You know, you get people like that. I believe Jesus is the Father. Isn't it interesting that when Jesus was in the Jordan River, he threw his voice and said, Well done. <laughs> <laughs> So how many know that, uh, that that would have been pride? If he had said, well done, my good and faithful son. Yeah. No, he didn't say that. The Father said that. Amen. The heavens opened and the Father spoke. Glory to God. Amen. 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 So there's a Father, there's a Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I think sometimes people are kind of mixed up on this nowadays. The Holy Spirit is the part of God that is everywhere all the time. Amen. And He's in you. Come on, somebody. Amen. And you can be baptized in the Holy Spirit and be overflowing in the Spirit of God, the third person of the Trinity. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. The Holy Spirit is the manifester. The Holy Spirit was upon the face of the deep when Jesus spoke the words of the Father. How many know that Jesus is the Word of the Father made flesh? Yeah. Come on, somebody. When Jesus spoke, it was the Holy Spirit that manifested all of creation. It's the Holy Spirit that speaks for the Father. Amen. It's the Holy Spirit that speaks for the Son. And when we hear the voice of God, it's through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Right. Amen. Yes. And when we hear the voice of the Father and the voice of Jesus through the Holy Spirit... God's saying, will you obey my, my words? Will you speak my words? Will you decree my words? Will you rise up and be my children? Will you go forth just like me? Come on. Amen. God's looking for a people that will believe him and speak his word, believe his word, 
and speak it with power. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Whew. I believe it is time for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. Turn with me over here to Psalms 103. 103rd Psalm is so good. Let's just start here in, uh, start in verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. You ever, you ever know sometimes you need to tell your soul, that's your mind, your will, and your emotions. You've got to tell your mind to bless the Lord. Because you're just, you're out in la-la land. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Let I me mean, know there's, a, there's benefits to serving the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, there's sometimes you get a job and, uh, uh, you know, you're just thrilled you got the job. And they say, oh, by the way, there's, you know, it includes benefits. You go, oh, really? <laughs> Glory to God. And I think people are that way with, with Christianity. You know, they're, they're saying, oh, I'm saved and going to heaven. You know, it's not about getting to heaven. Right. If it was about getting to heaven, it wouldn't be about long life. Amen. Are you hearing me? The blessing is long life. The blessing is, you know, God will add 10 years to your life if you're good. Yeah. That seems bad. I mean, if I'm trying to get to heaven, I would try to be bad. <laughs> <laughs> no. God wants you to have good, long life, blessed, hallelujah, blessed going in, blessed going out, blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed wherever you go. Everything you set your hand to shall be blessed. Amen. That's the blessing of the Lord. He's, try, he, mm, he's got benefits. There's some benefits to serving God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, in my father's house, when I was, my daddy, glory be to God, my dad, he, he was a hard-working man. Hard-working man. And he, I mean, we, whatever it is that we wanted, he tried whatever he could do to get it. I remember he uh, uh, would take on a second job during Christmas just so that we could have whatever we wanted for Christmas. Come on. I mean, he worked hard. I mean, he had a good job. We had a beautiful home. We had a beautiful pool, built-in pool in the backyard. I mean, beautiful view. We, had, we lived in a nice home. Glory. We had benefits. For, I had benefits growing up in that house. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. My father had benefits. Glory to God. But there was something about growing up in my father's house yeah. that I was blessed. Amen. And my daddy, he made sure I was blessed. Amen. Every Christmas, he'd go, he'd go to work. I mean, he'd go to work for, you know, I mean, he had this, he was an engineer. I mean, he had a great job. But in the evenings, he'd go work and, and, and uh, he'd be over at some department store uh, selling in the evenings so we'd have a beautiful Christmas. Hallelujah. That's my daddy. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, now I know there's, there's some, some people didn't have a good daddy. And um, they can't have a good comprehension of, of our Heavenly Father. Because if you didn't have a real good daddy, you don't understand that there could be a good Heavenly Father. But I want you to know that uh, there is a good Heavenly Father. Amen. And whatever it is, and if your daddy wasn't a good daddy, let me tell you something. You always had a good daddy, your Heavenly Father. That's right. Amen. That's right. And He has benefits. I mean, good things. I mean, he, His loving kindness just keeps giving gifts. Glory be to God. Amen. He'll do whatever it takes to get something good into your hands. Amen. He's trying to get something to you. He's not trying to take something away from you. Yeah. He's trying to bless you. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He hadn't cursed you. That curse came on Adam through Adam's sin. No, God's from that point on, God's tried to get us back into a place of blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. We've got a great heavenly Father. Benefits. <laughs> I like that. Verse 3, who forgives, now notice some of these uh, benefits. 
who forgives all your iniquities. Everybody say all. All, all your sins. Who heals all your diseases. Say all. all. <laughs> who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness. Now we found out that loving kindness is literally the Hesed of God. Uh, in the Messi Messianic New Testament, in Hebrew, uh, the, the word loving kindness or the word hasad is the word that, that they translate grace in the New Testament. So this, instead of charis, of course, it would be all in Hebrew, being messianic. Uh, it is the word hasad or loving kindness. So the word grace is God's loving kindness to us. Amen. He's always had this loving kindness. He's always loved us. He loved us when we were unlovable. Amen. And He still loves you when you're unlovable. Glory to God. <laughs> I mean, uh, some of you can be un... Never mind. But uh, <laughs> God loves you. And that word loving kindness is the grace of God. Yeah. And that grace is in the Old Testament. Come on, somebody. Amen. Glory to God. And we've got to understand this. So let's read on. So it says, uh, uh, Who satisfies, in tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things. Everybody say good things. Good things. I believe that those good things that he satisfies your mouth with is not just food. I believe it's also words. Amen. He puts words in your mouth so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm 39. Glory to God. <laughs> hey, don't blame me. He put the word in my mouth. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Verse 6. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known His ways to Moses, His acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, full of grace, slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, contend with, neither will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. Now this is Old Testament. And it's talking about grace. Look what's going on here. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is the mercy towards them that fear Him. Fear the, fear the Lord. As far as, and, and the word fear really is the word reverence. As far as the east is from the west, so far has He removed our transgressions, our sins from us. Like as a father, but say father. father. Now that word uh, some of you have the word uh, comforts. Uh, some uh, have the word pity. Uh, really, this word is a word that means grace. Like as a father gives grace to his children, so the Lord gives grace to them that reverence him. How many know there's, there's a good analogy? Every time you think of something, if you want to know what God's heart is concerning it, just think of a good father. What would a good father do in that situation? You know, we should probably get wristbands. What would a good... Never mind. Uh, w, w, never mind. Uh, but, but really, we need to think that. We need to think a father and a child. How good is a father? What, what would a father do? Would a father want you sick? Would a father want you poor? I, I, you know, Amy's my daughter. I, I wanted her to get a good job. Praise God, she got a good job. And, and when when she was uh, now she's she's pregnant, and I'm praying she had a beautiful baby. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> How many know that God wants good things for His children? Amen. But we got to believe that. <clears throat> we got to believe that God wants good things. Uh, and the best analogy is a father and a, and a child. We, I, my child was sick. I didn't want my child to be sicker. I want my, ch my child well. Uh, whatever it took to get my child well. Whatever it took for my child to prosper. Whatever it took for my child to have a good job. Whatever it took for my child to, to go forth in this world uh, prosperous and, and have a good life. How much more does our Heavenly Father want good things for His children? Amen. And so we need to see that. Hallelujah. 
Look at verse 14. For God our Father knows our frame. He knows us. <laughs> he remembers that we are dust. Aren't you glad that when he looks at you, he's not looking at you like, you know, he just, he knows your frailty. He knows your weaknesses. He knows when you're going to blow it before you blow it. <laughs> and he still loves you. Amen. Come on. Lord. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy, the love of God, the, uh, is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that reverence Him and His righteousness to His children's children, to such as keep His co co covenant, and to those that remember His commandments to do them. Now, that's Old Testament. Old Testament talking about grace. Old Testament talking about, about God being loving, you know, the loving kindness of God, the grace of God. Uh, Pastor, I always thought it was the law in the Old Testament and it was grace in the New Testament. Let me tell you something right now, and you need to get this so clear inside of you. It has always been <laughs> grace through faith. Amen. Amen. Grace through faith is not some new concept to God. Right. When you look at Hebrews chapter 11, it is the hall of fame of, of faith. You got Abraham walking by faith. You got Enoch who believed and walked with God. Uh, over and over you see David walked by faith. All of these patriarchs in the Old Testament written about in the New Testament in Hebrews chapter 11. Yeah. Talking about how they walk by faith. Amen. Everybody say faith. faith. It's always been about faith. Hallelujah. Well, I thought people got saved by the law. No one <laughs> has ever gotten saved by the law. Right. And, if, and if there was anybody who ever got saved by the law in, in, in any fashion... The only one was Jesus. Amen. Because Jesus fulfilled the law. Yes. When Jesus fulfilled the law, it was because he walked in it perfectly, yes. in vicariously, in other words, in our place, yes. dying in our place. Come on, somebody. Amen. Lord. Hallelujah. As the perfect lamb, spotless lamb. He died upon, you know, there have been lambs upon those altars and, and bullocks and, and, and all types of, of offerings. And they were always looking to the future. Always looking to their Messiah. They were looking forward. We're looking back. Amen. Are you seeing this? Amen. It's always been faith. <laughs> it's always been faith. It's always believing our God. Hallelujah. The law was put there to show us that we could not do it. That's right. The law was placed there to show us that Jesus is the Messiah. Amen. Lord. Amen. And that Jesus did it all. Amen. The Father created Adam. Glory to God. The last Adam always was. Yes. Jesus. The last Adam, how many know it had to be a son to fulfill all things? Amen. And on this Father's Day, we've got sons here. And we're sons. Amen. They're going to rise up and do the will of our Father. Amen. Glory be to God. Jesus did it all. Now Jesus says, now that He has done it all, He is saying, I'm going to put my words in you. He says, you are the righteousness, the right standing of Christ. You're in right standing now because of what I did. He did it all. He did it all. So that now we can walk in it. Hallelujah. And now we can speak the word by faith. Rising up. Believing. 
that our God is with us. And we're no longer disconnected, but now we are reconciled so that we can walk with God, talk with God, be with God, and He can speak His words through us and we can do His works. Amen. See, grace was never a reason not to have works. Grace is the enabling to do works. Amen. Grace is the empowerment to do works. Now, we don't do works to get to heaven. Jesus did it all. Amen. When Jesus cried out, it is finished, it was done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's all done. Those that were looking forward, <laughs> their, their answer was done. Those that, of us that look back to the cross, it is finished. And every benefit of that cross, every benefit of God the Father's loving kindness, Jesus was placed into the earth. Glory be to God. And in that tomb for three days. But then he didn't stay. And he came back in his resurrection. Come on, somebody. He rose from the dead. And when he rose from the dead, he rose and you rose with him. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's done. It's finished. It's paid for. There's no other sacrifice. We don't need another temple. There'll be another temple. But it, it's not. <laughs> it's finished. It's done. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Whew. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We've got to have a good understanding of the Word of God and the Trinity and all of what has taken place. Old Testament grace, New Testament grace. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Let's go down here verse 3. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father, but I say Father, Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ. So in other words, grace and the benefits and the goodness now come from the Father and are paid for through Jesus. It's done. Hallelujah. Verse 4, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God, which is given you by, everybody say by. by. No, no, stay. By Jesus Christ, that in everything you are enriched, that in everything you are enriched, that in everything you are enriched. That word enriched in the Greek is the word plutizo. Plutizo means extreme, extreme wealth. Wow. Wow. Don't throw rocks. I'm just telling you the Greek. <laughs> it says, it says, through this grace, we move into this extreme wealth. The, uh, the benefits and the blessings and the goodness of God that's far beyond, exceeding abundantly above what we could ask. Hallelujah. Or even think. Amen. The goodness of God. This platizo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Jesus Christ that in everything you are enriched, platizo, by Jesus. Now, number one, in all utterance. In other words, the words that come out of our mouths by faith. That we would walk by faith and talk. And let me tell you something. Faith is voice activated. We speak the word of the living God. The utterance comes by grace. The, the abundance of every good thing that God our Father has given us comes from words. Jesus created everything with words. We create our future with our words. Amen. You are the prophet of your own future. Yeah. God wants you to speak the word of the living God. He wants you to speak your future. He wants you to speak the word. He wants you to create your beauty and your, your wealthy place and your, yeah. the good things that He has prepared. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. 
And it's always more than what you're thinking. It's always more than what you're thinking. Well, I just want a little bit, Pastor Jeff. I just want enough for me and mine. I just want enough to pay my light bill. That's, that's what's called um, selfishness. Right. You see, it, 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 when you only want enough for yourself, that, that's selfishness. Yeah. See, God never wants us that way. God always wants you to have enough for you and your neighbor. Amen. Are you hearing me? Amen. You know, we have this idea today that, well, you know, prosperity is bad, Pastor. Prosperity is bad. No. Uh, and we have this idea that prosperity is greed. Right. No, greed is only wanting enough for yourself. Do we understand what words mean? Mm -hmm. but, but the way it's taught today in most churches, that prosperity is greed. No, greed is the attitude of your heart concerning the prosperity. If you want it all for yourself, then that's greed. Amen. Right. Or if you only want your bills paid and you don't want to help anybody else, that's greed. Right. But if I want enough for me and my neighbor, that is the grace and the love of God. Amen. And God's trying to put grace in us so that we'll move by grace. Yeah. That His love, that the fruit of the Spirit is love. Come on, somebody. Amen. And it manifests in, in many different types of fruit, but let me tell you, it's love. Yeah. And when we get so close to Him, we fill up with Him, and then we're going to bless somebody. Amen. God wants to bless you. Yeah. In turn, we're supposed to bless somebody. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, there's somebody right now that is waiting on your blessing. That's right. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. And you're about to be in the right place at the right time with substance. Amen. Why? Because you're not wanting just enough for you. You're wanting enough to be a giver. Amen. I'm not talking about just giving in the church. Come on, giving in the church. Amen. <laughs> but I'm talking, I'm talking about meeting your neighbor's need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And that doesn't mean just somebody who has a cardboard sign on the sidewalk at, at the exit of the freeway. <laughs> I saw a great one the other day in California. There was, there was a guy standing there and said, he, he, he literally had this. Please give. I want to buy a pizza before, I, before I'm incarcerated. Arrested. Arrested. There he is. That's what it said. I want to buy a pizza before I'm arrested. <laughs> I, please give. I want to buy a pizza before I'm arrested. That was you. I thought he was creative. <laughs> I probably made a lot of money that day. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if he bought a pizza. Probably not. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. <laughs> In all utterance, how many know that grace comes out your mouth? Come on, somebody. You speak the words of God. Now, notice the next word knowledge. In all utterance and in all knowledge. You cannot speak the word if you don't know the word. If you're not putting the word in your heart, faith cometh by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Faith cannot be produced. The word cannot be produced unless you're putting the word in you. Amen. That's why we gather together on Sunday and Wednesday. But how many know that's good, but you should be getting some word on Monday? That's right. Amen. Amen. You get that word. And matter of fact, it, it, well, I, don't know, I don't know where I'm supposed to go on Monday or do that. Just take the word you got on Sunday and meditate on it Monday. Come on. Hallelujah. Sunday's message is not just for Sunday morning. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sunday morning's message and Wednesday night's message is not just for those, you know, that, that period of time. It's so that you will take that, you will you'll run with it, 
and that it will change your life. Come on, somebody. Well, if you get the Word of God and you work that Word and you just keep working that Word and man, you fire yourself up in the Word of God and you just keep working the Word and working the Word, meditating on the Word through the week, that Word will always have a harvest. It will always manifest because you're working the seed. Hallelujah. You don't work the seed, you won't, you won't have the harvest. And so it's important to, to get the knowledge of God so you can walk like God and give Him praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn with me quickly over here to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians. We have a wonderful Heavenly Father. Colossians chapter 1, verse 10. That you might walk worthy of the Lord to all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. When we increase in the knowledge of God, we're going to walk in these things. Verse 11, strengthened with all might according to His glorious power, to all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks to the Father, which has made us qualified to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. How many know there's an inheritance? Yes. Amen. About three of you. Well, there's an inheritance. Come on. Uh, how many know that inheritance is all of the blessings of His grace? And God wants to bless you. And God the Father has already done it. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. And look what it says. It says, giving thanks to the Father, which has made us qualified. You are qualified. The Father, through Jesus, made you qualified to be blessed. Amen. Notify your face. Glory be to God. Amen. 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 The Father did that. Yeah. Whew. Verse 13. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. In whom we have redemption, Jesus now, through, we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Now how many know that God did that through his son? Verse 15. Who is, now Jesus, who is the image of the invisible God the Father. The firstborn of every creature. How many know God the Father, when Jesus rose from the dead, He was the first begotten of the Father. Come on, somebody. In other words, the first begotten of this covenant whereby He fulfilled it to the point where He was the first or the last Adam or had completely caused us to be redeemed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whew. But if He's the first, you're the second, you're the third, you're the fourth. Okay. How many know that we are now sons of the Father again, reconciled just as if Adam never sinned? Hallelujah. 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 Word of God says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Well, what does it mean? It means uh, we're redeemed of the curse. Amen. And if we're redeemed of the curse, we should say so. We've been redeemed. Just as if Adam never sinned. Amen. We're blessed going in. We're blessed going out. Just like Adam was before the fall. Yes. We're no longer under the fall. We're under the blessing. Amen. And we're under this grace of the blessing. And it's no longer having to do anything with the law. It's all by the grace of Jesus Christ who paid it in full. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Lest any man should boast that I did something that it was the cross plus my works. No, it wasn't the cross plus your works. It was the cross. Amen. And Jesus paid it all. Hallelujah. Amen. But it is our faith through this grace that we receive. If we don't believe, then you don't get it. Come on, somebody. Amen. How many know you've got to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Amen. Amen. Now notice, you know, in Romans it says, and confess the Lord Jesus. It didn't say confess, you know, necessarily your sins. We, we do that. Yeah. But it's confessing the Lord Jesus. In other words, we're confess, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, then what are we doing? We're confessing that He did it. 
Not us. But he paid the price. He did it all. Not me. I'm his filthy rags without him. But I'm not without him. Amen. I've been made as white as snow. And the Father so loved the world, he gave his only Son. And I have life, and I have abundant life, because I have a heavenly Father. And there is a firstborn Son. It had to be a Son. Just like Adam was a Son. There had to be a Son that turned it all around. And Jesus turned it all around for every one of us today. Amen. Hallelujah. We're blessed. Just as if Adam never sinned. We've been redeemed. Not some glad morning, but every morning. For his mercies are new. And that word mercies has said, which is grace. His grace is new every morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's always been there. His loving kindness has always been there. He's been trying to show us that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. He is the image of the Father. You cannot see the Father, but through Jesus Christ we see the Father. When my daughters, and I never forgave you for this, Amy. When my daughters uh, met my, my dad for the first time, their grandfather, their grandpa, uh, they said, You act just like Grandpa. <laughs> same lousy you know <clears throat> uh, sense of humor and this and that and the other <laughs> and, uh, but how many know you, the, you, the more you spend with your father the more you like him yeah. you, you become like him how many know that Jesus spent a lot of time with his father yeah. Jesus actually was with his father before the world began come on he just became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. But he spent a lot of time with his father. And so he was the image of his father. He was everything. If you saw Jesus, you saw the father. Come on, somebody. Amen. He walked like him, talked like him. Matter of fact, he only spoke what he, his father told him to say. He was just like him. Now, I don't know if you had a great father. And if you did, that's wonderful. But you have a heavenly father that you need to be like. Amen. To walk like Him, talk like Him. And through Jesus Christ, you can. You can be a child of God. When you walk on this earth, people should look at you and say, there's something different about you. Right. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to end this morning in Romans. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 14. How many, how many know that every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father above? Amen. The Father of lights. Every good and perfect gift. Hallelujah. Comes down from the Father. Hallelujah. Paid for by the Son. Romans chapter 8. Now let's go down here to verse uh, 14. Hallelujah. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Abba means daddy or papa. It, it, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's a term that's used uh, that is intimate. Uh, not just your know, father. Father, may I come in, please? No, it's, it's <laughs> daddy. You know? It's papa. It, it's, it's, it's a loving relationship that we have with our heavenly father now. We can cry out Abba. We can cry out daddy. We have a heavenly daddy. Come on, somebody. Amen. A heavenly daddy. A heavenly papa. Do you know that Jesus literally said Abba when he was talking? 
to his heavenly Father. Matter of fact, in, in uh, Mark chapter 14, verse 36, Jesus says, says, Daddy, hallelujah. We need to see that picture. Jesus said, Abba, he's talking to his heavenly Father. He's talking to his heavenly Father. Jesus says, Abba, Papa. They had an intimate relationship. Today, I encourage you to have an intimate relationship with your Heavenly Father because Jesus paid for it and He has reconciled you to it. And today, we, we worship and we honor our Heavenly Father. Hallelujah. Say this after me. I have a Heavenly Father, a Heavenly Daddy that loves me cares about me, has benefits, <laughs> his loving kindness, his grace is overflowing towards me. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit loves me. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God.